Hey guys, welcome back. If you are new to my channel, my name is Julie and I post videos on affordable beauty. Today, we're not really talking about affordable beauty. I wanted to be nostalgic today and we're gonna be doing a look with the original Urban Decay Naked Palette. They're relaunching it at Ulta. This is not a sponsored video. I just love the Urban Decay Naked Palette and this was just an excuse for me to use so it. I'm gonna first go in with the shade Naked. And I know that this shade looks a little weird in the pan. I actually refilled <laughs> the shade once. I have a video on my channel, like how to go about doing that. So I'll link it down below. So like that technique that I used to refill the naked, I also refilled the shade in Virgin. So I have actually used both of those shades completely up in this palette. I just remember when they first launched this palette, all the palettes that we had at the drugstore were little palettes like this, like the little Wet n Wild trios or the Cover Girl, the Shimmering Sands, and Maybelline had like some that were quads. And there wasn't very many palettes that had any matte shades in it or a lot of palettes that were a neutral color scheme like this. So when this palette came out, it was a huge deal. And my palette is that original palette that they launched back in 2011, whenever this palette came out. I think it was 2011. So I know that this palette is really old and some people probably would have gotten rid of this palette, but honestly, it smells fine. It applies fine. Like my eyes aren't irritated. So I'm going to continue to use this palette. Let's go in with the shade Sin and I'm just using a flat shader brush. This is from an Amazon brush set. That first crease brush that I use was also from the Amazon, the same Amazon brush set. So I will link that set down below, but I've been raving about that set on my channel because it's a brush set with 18 quality brushes for around $10. I'm probably not gonna pick up the new release. Who knows? I never say never because with me, the minute that I say I'm not gonna do something is the minute that I do it. So, <laughs> um, But I'm gonna go in with Toasted now. I do think that this original palette, the shimmers are a little bit more shimmery than what's in the current palette they released. I mean, I don't know that 100% because I don't have that palette and I haven't went and swatched that palette in person, so I don't know that to be true. But just from what I can see online, it seems like this palette does have a little bit more shimmer in it than the original, but like the tones and everything, look about the same. Are you guys excited for this Urban Decay Naked release again? Does it make you feel nostalgic? Are you gonna pick up this palette? Because, you know, I know some people either got rid of their original palette because it got too old and they just didn't feel comfortable using it or they used a lot of the shades up and wanted to repurchase it, but then, you know, Urban Decay discontinued it back in 2018. So let me know what you guys are thinking about with this palette. I'm gonna go in with the shade Dark Horse and I'm gonna lightly just pat that color right here. And then I'm gonna go in with the Sigma E25 Blending and blend that in the crease there, like in the outer V area. This palette just really launched everyone into loving eyeshadow. That's like when the explosion of doing eyeshadow tutorials became really popular here on YouTube. And I mean, like YouTube had only been around for like what YouTube came, was launched in 2005. So like six years later was like when this palette was launched and I feel like YouTube was really starting to get popular then. There were a lot more people that started making like YouTube channels and especially like beauty channels. That was the year that I started YouTube was in 2011. I do feel that this Urban Decay palette was the pinnacle of our eyeshadow, like love and craze and all the eyeshadow tutorials because there were so many tutorials with the Urban Decay Naked palette. Even I did a bunch of tutorials and I remember getting like the Naked 2, that just being such a big deal in the Naked 3, like all of the Naked palettes, like I felt like I wanted to collect all of them. 
I mean, there were some that I didn't have in my collection. And I'm hoping that maybe with this launch of this palette, it might get people more excited about wearing eyeshadow again. So I'm going to go back in with some more of Naked. And I'm just going to kind of blend around the edge of Dark Horse. Just kind of blend things out a little bit. It's just crazy how trends with eyeshadows and just makeup in general just change over the years. But if I was going to update this Urban Decay palette, I would remove probably Creep and Gunmetal, like get those two colors out of this palette because I feel like most of us, we don't really use black or like this color anymore. So I think it would be nice if it had a more warm transition in here and then put a like dark um, neutral brown in here that's matte. I'm trying to find a good example. Like this color in the Wet n Wild color icon palette, like a dark brown like this and like a warm mid-tone brown like that. That would really update this palette to what people wear for eyeshadow like currently. So I don't know. I mean, I know it's really nostalgic to like release the original original, but I think it would have been cool if they would have done like those slight updates with the palette and just kept a lot of the other same shades. I'm gonna go in with the shade Virgin and I'm gonna use that as my brow bone highlight, which this shade is a lot more like light and highlighted than I remember it being, but you just need a little bit of this. But this was one of my like favorite shades in this palette. I'm going to take a little bit of lotion and I'm gonna clean up the edge of this eyeshadow. Then I'm gonna jump into doing my face makeup and then we'll come back and finish out the eyes. So, but yesterday when I recreated this look or came up with this look, I should say, I loved it. Oh, I just loved it so much yesterday. It just was perfect. I'm going to go ahead and apply some sunscreen and I'm just using this Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence sunscreen. And then I'm going to go ahead and moisturize my lips with the Hard Candy Gloss Topia. This is just in the clear. For my foundation, I'm just going to use the L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. This is in the shade 2-3 Light. And this is getting borderline a little too dark for me, but I let my mom borrow the lighter one that I have in this. I wanted her to test it out and just see like what she thought about it because my mom is in her 60s and I always like to get her opinion on things just, you know, for like more mature skin. And she actually really likes this L'Oreal foundation. I think this is a great foundation for a lot of age ranges. It's one of my favorite drugstore foundations. And I do think that this one is really comparable to the Maybelline Superstay skin tint. They're both very similar. I'm using the Maybelline Superstay Activewear Concealer. This is in shade 15. This is my favorite drugstore concealer. Like I was saying, I really hope that this relaunch of the Urban Decay Naked Palette maybe sparks our love of eyeshadow again. It's crazy how just world events shape beauty and fashion trends. Before the pandemic, we were so into wearing a lot of makeup, doing a lot of contouring, doing really glam makeup looks. And then whenever the pandemic happened, it just became that thing where it's like, why put on this all this makeup if I'm gonna have to cover it up in a mask and it's gonna rub off my lipstick or my bronzer or blush. And then for other people just working at home, it's like, why am I gonna put on all this makeup when no one's really gonna see me except for like in, you know, your meetings and stuff. And then with everything that happened with the pandemic, it messed up the supply chain. So then a lot of beauty brands had trouble, you know, manufacturing new beauty products. So beauty brands were not launching new products. So people just got used to not purchasing a lot of makeup because income went down. And I mean, a lot of people are still struggling with the economy and everything. So people just aren't buying as much makeup. Like it's not as much of a essential. Not that it ever is like a big essential, but you know what I mean? It's like, if you have to cut back on things, 
makeup is going to be one of the things that you cut back on, especially if you have a collection with a ton of makeup and, you know, you don't really need to buy anything. So I think all of those things just contributed. I'm using the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder just contributed to people not wearing makeup as much and also getting away from doing eyeshadow and like more glam makeup looks. And it's like everything always evolves. It's like even though a lot of like beauty trends and fashion trends kind of come back around, it's like an updated version of the past. Back in 2011 when this palette came out, the Naked Palette, I would have done my brows quite a bit differently than we currently do eyebrows. So, but I'm going to do my brows more up to date, like how we would currently do brows. So the way I've been doing my brows, like my brow lamina lamination, like I told you guys I got my brows laminated. It's really starting to wear off now. So my eyebrow hairs don't stand up as much as they did when I first got it done. But I do think for eyebrows, the style is still a little bit more fluffy than it was back in 2011. The brows currently are a little bit more natural, but somewhat put together. So like I said, I'm using the Maybelline Build-A-Brow. And I really like this product. So I think like a great way to kind of update an old makeup style and make it more current is to do at least the current like brows, like what people are currently doing for brows that really can update a makeup look. So, but yeah, this build brow, it's really quick and easy to use in it really does look like brow hairs. And I find that this shade, which is in ash brown, matches my eyebrows really well. Another thing that we were doing in 2011 was contouring. And I don't really contour, contour too much anymore, but sometimes I still like to do like a light contour. So just to do kind of like an updated contoured type of look, I'm gonna do the LA Girl Just Blushing in Just Because. This is a really nice cool toned blush that I'm gonna use as a contour. And I'm using the Morphe M530 brush. So I just got a little bit of that shade on there. I'm just gonna lightly like contour. I know currently, I feel like a lot of people do things pretty high up on the face. But if you're going to contour, you can't contour way up here. It's not going to look right because you want to contour like where the hollows of your cheeks are. But to do this updated contour, I'm not going to go super dark. I know in 2011, we were pretty dark with like the contouring and everything. I mean, I never got super crazy about my contouring like I probably would have done something kind of similar to this. Which in 2011, I think that might've been when contouring was just starting to become popular. So I didn't really even start doing it until probably like 2015 to 2018. So just a light contour like that. And this brush is really good for doing a more soft contour. But this product is such a pretty color for contouring. So I'm just gonna bronze up along the hairline here. And then just take a little bit of this down on the cheeks above where I put the contour. Just to warm the face up a little bit. With bronzer, you wanna put it in the areas where the sun would like naturally like tan your face. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of that here, like on the cheeks, just lightly apply it. For me, another way to update this look is to use a more current blush color. So, I mean, and I use all different blush colors, but in general, the bright, like bright pinks and also 
kind of more like rosy mauve colored blushes. I feel like these color blushes are more current for 2024, where back in 2011, we were using more cool toned blushes. So this blush here is the Flower Beauty Flower Pots Blush in Sweet Pea. So this would have definitely been a blush color I would have reached for with the Urban Decay Naked Palette back then. But I was, you know, experimenting with this look yesterday and this blush looked a lot more updated with this eyeshadow look. So I'm going to be using the Makeup Revolution in Pink Lady. So I think this is another good way to, to make this look a, a little bit more modern. <clears throat> I feel like I got a tickle in my throat. And I'm just applying this blush with the Sigma F40. I don't think that I would have applied my blush so high back in 2011. Definitely like applying blush much higher up. Like I would have applied blush like more in this area in 2011 and not up. But I do think at least for like my face shape and maybe it's just because I've gotten used to applying blush this way that this does look a little bit more flattering. I wouldn't have probably applied so much blush back then. It just would have been like a light application of blush. And see, I think that brighter, warmer type of pink blush, it helps to balance out how the eyes are a little bit more cool, where if you use a really cool toned blush, and I'm a bit more of a neutral warm skin tone, so if you were a cool skin tone, you could probably get away with using a blush that's more cool toned and it look good. But I think for my skin tone, so if you're more neutral or warm, like a neutral warm skin tone, I think pairing the Naked Palette with a more warm blush just helps to make it look more modern and just more flattering. A lot of people currently don't even use highlights, so I guess if you wanted to make this look super modern, you could just skip a highlight. But me personally, I find that I think I look better with a highlight. So I'm gonna use the Essence Pure Nude Sunlighter. And that's the thing about makeup, I think that you should do whatever is most flattering for yourself, not necessarily what is the current trends of makeup. I think it's cool to kind of try out trends that way you can decide what looks best on, you know, your face shape and like your skin coloring and everything. And that way you can kind of figure out what works for you and what you do like, but I think once you figure that out, there really is no need to follow makeup trends unless you just enjoy doing that. And sometimes I like to experiment with like makeup trends and stuff, but for the most part, I just like to stick to what works for myself. And I know probably like a lot of you guys are like that as well. Another thing that I would have done in 2011 is used eyeliner. And I feel like I rarely use eyeliner these days, or if I use an eyeliner, it's like a shadow or pencil liner and I really smoke the liner out. I am going to use a liquid liner and I'm going to use black. This is definitely a shade I would have used, but I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to update this and make it look a little bit more modern. So, and this is just the Physician's Formula Eye Booster Pen in Ultra Black. Just use a little bit of Creep on just an angled brush. Like, just get some of that shade on there like that. This is the Essence Angled Liner Brush. Just go on top of the liner. Make sure you tap the brush off really well because that shade can have some fallout. And just go over top of the liner to smoke it out. And this technique also helps you to hide any liner mistakes. Like if you don't get the liner perfect or if it's not even, it camouflages any flaws. I hope you can see the difference between this eye and this one. Like how that just softens everything up. And then before I do like my mascara and everything, I'm gonna set my makeup with the Urban Decay All Nighter. And I'm almost out of this makeup setting spray, so actually, I think I'm gonna use the LA Girl setting spray. The 
then I'm going to curl my lashes up and apply some mascara. So I'm going to apply a couple coats of this. And this is the Essence Lash Without Limits in Ultra Black. I still enjoy wearing false lashes, but my updated way that I wear them is instead of wearing like the full band of eyelash, I will cut the eyelashes in half and just use like either this front part or the last half on the outer corners of the eye to lift the outer corners. A lot of makeup currently is to like lift the face up in this area and kind of give more of like that fox eye type of look and with the outer corner lashes it does create more of that look so I am going to apply false lashes today I think it looks really pretty with this look but this looks just as good to just do mascara and not apply any lashes so just whatever you would prefer and I'm going to be using the Ardell Faux Mink Wispies. These are the Demi Wispies. And I already cut them in half, like the front half of the lashes. I've been showing you guys in my eyeshadow tutorials like how I go about applying these outer corner lashes. But I use the Duo Lash Adhesive, the brush on one in dark. If you're into the like little individual lashes, those are really good to use in the outer corner as well to like lift the eye. And I have worn these little outer corner ones a couple of times. So I just place it there like that. And then kind of put down the corner and then this corner and then just kind of press it on. I feel like once you've worn them a few times they're kind of shaped to your eye so they're a little bit easier to put on. But like I showed you guys in my other tutorial like a few tutorials back like how that just lifts the eye a little bit and also kind of darkens your outer corner area. So I just think this looks so pretty with this makeup look. The original Naked palette, I would have worn a lipstick like this one here from L'Oreal. This is their color Riche in Ferris Nude, which I do still really like this lipstick, but I usually like to pair it with a lip liner now. Sometimes I don't, but it can kind of wash me out a little bit if I don't use it with like a lip liner. So what I'm going to do to make this a little bit more modern, and I experimented with a couple of different things. Like I tried that lipstick with a lip liner. I felt like it was too makeup-y for like this look. And then I did the like lined lips with the lip gloss and I still felt like that was too makeup-y because my eyes are so dramatic. What I found to look the best with this eye look to make it look more modern is to either just wear a gloss on its own or to use one of these lip stains with a gloss over top. I'm gonna be using the CoverGirl Outlast lip stain in the shade Admire. I finally was able to find this color. I couldn't find this anywhere. But like this pink shade is a bit more cool but it's a little bit darker than what I would have worn in 2011 with this makeup look. So I think this is like a more modern take on that color that we were wearing then. And then to top it, I'm gonna to top it with the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in the color Moon. And it's like currently we're wearing lip gloss and having like a really shiny lips at the moment. And I think this is another way to really modernize the look. I really want to warm this upper part of my crease up. Like I want it to be slightly warmer. Take your bronzer and just your crease brush and just lightly go on the top of the crease, like before you get to the brow bone and just slightly warm that up. It's like, if you're like me and your skin tone's slightly a little bit more warm, like that just looks so much better. Like, can you see the difference between my right eye uh, and this left one, like it just warms things up. It opens your eyes up a little bit more too. I don't know, I just 
That's why I really think the Urban Decay, that Naked palette would be so good if they would get rid at least of one of those dark shades and replace it with a warm mid-tone brown. That would have been perfect. That is this makeup look completed using the Urban Decay Original Naked Palette. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it wasn't too all over the place. I feel like this morning my brain was completely scattered, but are you all excited about this palette being re-released? Let us know down in the comments. I mean, I wish it was the same price that it was back in 2011 because they have raised the price on it, but I love the Urban Decay Naked Palette. Like, I'll always love this palette. But yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. I hope this was fun. Just walking down memory lane and just talking about makeup and just how things have sh shifted and changed over the years. And I know that eyeshadow is slowly making a comeback. I mean, for me, I've been wearing eyeshadow this whole time. Like, I love eyeshadow. You guys know that. Um, and I will always do eyeshadow tutorials here on my channel because I love eyeshadow so much. But I will see you all in my next video and I hope that you guys have a great day. Bye-bye. Mwah. You shouldn't doubt yourself because you're a work of art.